We did it not from a studio. We did it from a theater, a regular theater, a regular legitimate theater. We had a balcony. We had, you know, and we went to this other theater. We went to the, uh, we, we moved from that, that little theater, which was about 1,500 seats. We moved to the sister theater of Radio City, the center theater. Now, the center theater had 5,000 seats. 5,000. And I looked at this stage, which was enormous. I mean, my, you had to close it in, box it in. And I said, I'm going to do pantomimes here. <laughs> you know, 5,000 seats, how are you going to do pantomimes? How are you going to do? Well, we'll have, we'll have monitors all set up. And in the, uh, in, in the International, I had a, a screen about uh, a little bigger than uh, this, a little, about, uh, about four, by, four by eight, you know, or four by four, whatever it was. But it was a big screen. And I said, Look, can we bring the big screen? Because I'm going to need the big screen, especially, or a bigger screen, in, radio, in, the, in the center theater, which was a sister theater to the Radio City. And I said, Sid, we tried it, we can't walk. We got all the technicians down. I said, we tried it. We, it's, the throw is too long. We haven't, got the, you know, we, haven't, we haven't got the power to throw it that far, you know. I said, geez, you sure you can't do it? Because I'm going to need it. I'm going to get crazy. I can't. I got to get a reaction. If I go, well, we don't. We don't. Well, let's try it. Well, it's a very expensive proposition. It'll cost 100000 Put it in. I'll pay for it. So I embarrassed them. So they put it in. They put all the equipment in. They put it up. And they put it out, and they showed the picture, and it was very fuzzy. And I said, see, we can't, uh, we can't get it. I said, yeah, okay. I yelled up, I said, focus! And the guy went like this, and it cut clear. They didn't take in focus of the lens. They took all the other com com computations in, and they had everything <laughs> to tell me that, no, you can't do this, you can't do that. No, it can't be done. Oh, no, tell us you can't. You can't. Focus. Boom. They looked at him, and they looked at me, and go, well, <laughs> and this was a long, big argument. But that was, a, you know, I lost my temper there, and there was a couple other times I lost my temper. There was one incident where I was, uh, I, uh, I was going downtown after the show to, to see Zero Mostel at the, in the, in the village uh, gate, wherever it was. He was down in the village. I want to see him. So he went down there, and I had just gotten a brand new Cadillac now. A Cadillac brand new, it was like, Wow. Brand new Cadillac, it was like, oh my God. And I drove it down. They delivered me to the backstage door and I drove it down to, to, the, uh, to the village and I parked the car and I, it was a fire hydrant. So I parked away away from the fire hydrant and I'm walking across the street to go to the night to see zero and I hear, <laughs> bang. <laughs> and I look back and there's a guy with his car and he's trying to push me back so he can have room for, for, the, for the fire hydrant. And he's hitting my car, pushing it back. So I walked over to him and I said, pardon me, sir. You understand, that's my car. I just cut the car. It's a brand new car. Please, would you mind? Just take a walk. I said, you don't understand. My brother was there with me. Dave. Dave was like twice as big as me. And I looked at him and I said, you don't understand. That's my car and you're banging it. Take a walk. Get out of here. And he was sitting with his girlfriend and there was another couple in the back. So I reached in through the window and I picked him up by his lapels and he was holding on to the steering wheel. And I said, come with me. You remember being born? Because you're going to be born again. You're coming right through this window. And I did. I tore him through the window. And he, he was like, but my brother got me. Sid, leave him alone. You'll come. I said, so I said, okay. Then he took the car away. And that was one thing. And it was another thing where I was in uh, Chicago at the Palmer House with Mel Brooks. He came with me to, I was doing the Chicago Theater, we were doing eight, nine shows a day, which is wow. And I can't eat in between performances because I, I, I can't work on a full stomach. So now it's about 11 o'clock at night and I get home to the hotel and I sit down, I'm going to have dinner with, well, I'm going to have ice with it. Sitting down, I'm going to have a nice steak and, and Mel says, I want to go out. What? I got to get out. I want to go out. Come on, let's go out. I said, we just came from out. What are you talking about? I got to get out, Sid. I got to get out. No, come on. I can't stay. We're always in the side. We got to come on. Let's get out. I said, I'm just sitting down at dinner. Want to go out? Okay, you want to go out? Now we're on the 18th floor. And I pick him up and I open the window and I throw him up and I put him out the window. I said, is you? Is that far enough? You want to go out a little more? <laughs> My brother again came and said, Sid, you're crazy. 
I put him back in. But there was a lot of times I lost my temper. It was a release, actually, to lose the temper, you know, because I was holding things in all the time, because there are millions of things that go wrong, and you can't say anything all the time, you know? Because if you pick, 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 no good. You've got guys working for you, you don't pick on them. You say, you wait for a time, you say, okay, I think now this is what we're gonna do. You don't pick at little things. When it's all over, and you, then you take a look at the rehearsal, then you say, this is what I don't like, and this is what I don't like, but you don't pick. While they were create, when somebody's creating something, you don't pick at it. You let it develop first. The way, either, any way it goes. As we were writing, I said, we'll write more. We'll, write, we'll cut later. Come on, let's keep it, because you keep the flow going. When you keep the flow going, you keep the creative juices going. Because when you're on a roll, it's, it's very hard to get on a roll. And when you do get on a roll, it's very, you know, you've got to keep it going. Don't pick, 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 pick. No, no, no. That's when you, you learn that, you know.